It's an age-old battle between man and pest. In one corner, rice paddy, the staple crop of a billion-strong nation. In the other corner, bacterial leaf blight, a microbial disease that threatens to destroy everything rice farmers have worked for. But no matter how deadly the blows of bacterial leaf blight, farmers have a strong ally on their side, science. How can scientists working in research labs serve the ultimate knockout to a farmland pest? That's a question of science. The Andhra Pradesh countryside is a sight for sore eyes with vibrant paddy fields stretching as far as the eye can see. As picturesque as this scene is, it's also a critical lifeline of India's agrarian economy. India grows nearly 20% of the world's white rice and Andhra Pradesh is amongst its top producers. So, if these fields fall sick, it bodes ill for the entire nation. Within the rice bowl of Karnul district, farmers have been growing paddy for generations. In recent years, a new strain of rice has revolutionized their fortunes, Samba Masuri. This indigenously developed, fine-grained, premier quality rice is in high demand in both national and international markets. It's also a big hit with the farmers, with tens of thousands of acres across Andhra growing this variety. But lately, a terrible scourge has taken away some of its sheen. Some of us don't know what to do, sir. But it's all done. Just done, no. We have a lot of work to do. There was a little bit of blast to end up with the whole thing. A little bit of thirty percent to forty percent of the production. Oh, one day, well, two days ago, severe work was done. One acre was done. For acre was done. Fifteen bags were done. Bacterial leaf blight, a rice farmer's worst nightmare, caused by a bacterial pathogen called Xanthomonas aureusae. It infects individual rice leaves before spreading like wildfire through the entire crop. What makes bacterial leaf blight so deadly? The disease is entirely immune to pesticides and chemicals, leaving the farmer with no option but to watch his infected crop die. Samba Masuri is an especially susceptible variety of rice. Responding to this urgent call is a group of researchers from the Directorate of Rice Research, or DRR, and the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, or CCMB. Their collaboration brings together the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, or CSIR, and the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, or ICAR. This project of developing the resistant variety started in 2000. But before that, we had been doing a lot of background work on trying to characterize the various strains of the pathogen that are present in India. While CCMB's teams are experts in molecular studies of agricultural pathogens, DRR's team consists of India's leading experts in rice varieties. Joining forces, the collaboration sets out to investigate the blight-ravaged fields. In this disease, the typical symptoms are actually here. The symptoms start from the tip of the leaf and there is a drying of the leaf as the bacterium moves down the xylem vessels of the leaf and you can see the drying up. And this little brown spot here, this brown spot is a exudate of the bacterium. That means the bacterium comes out of the leaf and it falls into the irrigation water from where it can spread from uh, field to field. 
factors like a heavy dose of nitrogenous fertilizer, then cloudy condition, moderate to high rainfall, and then warm temperature, and field-to-field -field irrigation, they help in the rapid spread of the disease. It's what no doctor, human or plant, wants to hear. A disease that spreads rapidly and doesn't respond to any medication. With nearly 50 to 60 percent of a farmer's yield being destroyed each season, the very future of Samba Masuri could be in trouble. It's time for technology to take a page out of nature's book. Hello and welcome to Policy Watch. I am Vishal Dahiya and this week we will take a look at two major issues. First is the repositioning of Northeastern Council. When NEC was established, uh, then it was a clear recognition that you know this particular region it needs a separate agency to deal with the issues of development, which are interlinked with security issues as well. If you see the the, the, in a, take a holistic view of the importance of the Northeastern Council as well as the Northeast, you cannot uh, underestimate the economic potential and the economic the benefits that, that this region and this council can actually help uh, uh, exploit. Let's now take a look at the other issue that's standardization of metro project. There is need to economize on the cost, capital cost, there is need to reduce the operational cost as well as there is need as to make sure that we do not remain import dependent. Standardization is a good idea where, where, where the, the external environment is by and large uniform. But I think in so many cities where metro network has to come, standards are important, norms are important. Rajya Sabha TV's YouTube channel has just crossed a new, exciting milestone. It now has over a million subscribers. That's more than 10 lakh people who like and want to watch RSTV. Over 15 crore people have watched our videos. Our online viewers are also engaging with us more actively on YouTube. More and more people like, share and comment on our videos. We thank you, our growing tribe of RSTV viewers. We will strive every day to bring you more exciting and engaging content. So stay tuned to Rajya Sabha TV. Biological evolution follows a simple principle of natural selection, survival of the fittest. If any individual in a species has a weakness, it is eliminated. The remaining individuals survive because they have strong traits to overcome threats. The process of how these traits are passed from one generation to the next was laid out in the 19th century by Gregor Mendel the father of genetics. He proposed a theory of inheritance of characteristics. When two individuals crossbreed, their resultant offspring contains both their traits. Some of these offspring contain the best strengths of both parents. These are the individuals that survive and thrive, while others fail. Today, this simple theory is the cornerstone of all plant breeding technologies transforming agriculture. In the labs of CCMB, natural selection is getting a technological boost. The scientists first task answering the all-important question. Why do some rice varieties die from bacterial leaf blight while others are able to resist it? The answer lies in three genes named XA21, XA13 and XA5. Any rice variety with these genes in its DNA has the power to combat bacterial blight. 
But how do scientists locate them inside the double helix of rice DNA? That's where DNA marker assisted selection comes in. This technique is employed on different rice varieties in the hope of finding one that contains the three blight resistant genes. In this what we actually do is that we use DNA markers to identify within a segregating breeding population of rice plants those rice plants that have the desired characteristics. DNA markers are like flashlights which shine a light on the three blight resistance genes scientists are hunting for. If DNA markers locate these genes successfully, the rice variety is selected as donor parent for crossbreeding. Now this variety called SS113 will fertilize the recurrent parent, original Samba Masuri, in a growling session of multiple crossbreeds. So we set up a cross between this donor rice variety that was developed at Punjab Agricultural University and the original variety that was developed by Acharya NG Ranga Agricultural University and DRR and CCMB together worked on now transferring the genes from the variety developed at Punjab Agricultural University into the genetic background of Samba Masur. So that plant we used as the starting material for initiating another round of crosses. Meanwhile, within the greenhouses of DRR, this starting material undergoes intensive crossbreeding. In the first season, the donor parent fertilizes the recurrent parent, original Samba Masuri. The progeny contains the three blight resistant genes as well as the desired qualities of Samba Masuri. This plant is once again crossbred with the recurrent parent to create a more robust variety. The process is repeated across three to four seasons. Why is it so long drawn? It is essential that the process of crossbreeding should be repeated at least for three or four cycles so that you finally have a product which not only looks like Samba Masuri, also cooks like Samba Masuri and yields like Samba Masuri and it should also have bacterial blight resistance. It was one reason why we carried out the backcross process for four seasons. What happens in a typical crossbreeding process? First, the recurrent parent or Samba Masuri is emasculated. That means its anthers, which contain pollen, are removed. Once its own pollen is removed, it cannot self-fertilize. Next, the donor plant containing the three blight resistance genes is brushed against it. This ensures that only donor pollen is used in fertilization. The Samba Masuri plant has now been crossbred. But this isn't the end of the process. After each crossbreeding stage, the offspring is carefully checked for the presence of three blight resistant genes using DNA analysis techniques. If the genes are present, the plant undergoes a next round of crossbreeding with the recurrent parent, original Samba Masuri. Once all the crosses and DNA analysis are completed, what emerges is a super plant called Improved Samba Masuri. It's now time for the ultimate test, direct inoculation with the deadly bacterial leaf blight. Will the new variety survive? This is the bacterial blight uh, disease symptom which you can see on the midvein of the rice leaf which appears when we inoculate the bacterial leaf and this disease lesion progresses down the midvein. And here you can see that these rice leaves do not have this kind of disease lesion. So this is you can call the improved Samba Masuri variety wherein it does not develop the disease symptom because it harbors the three resistant genes. It's a success for the marker-assisted crossbreeding of improved Samba Masuri. Not just that, the entire process has been completed in record time. Usually for backcross breeding cycles, they 
take a total period of about eight or nine seasons. Since we are using markers, the total crossing period was reduced to just about three years, which means about four or five back crosses and then subsequent cycles of selfing. And then the second important reason is that it was since CCMB had all the good facilities with regard to molecular genotyping and DRR had all the good facilities with regard to developing the crosses, molecular breeding and also path phenotyping. It was done under a single shelf where in which scientists moved from DRR to CCMB to do some part of the analysis and scientists from CCMB came here to DRR to assist us in certain parts of the program. Today, the availability of the train tracks for inspection has reduced significantly because more trains are running and so less time for you to inspect. All these components are made of materials that are very fatigue resistant. You certainly cannot make them ideal. So the question is, how can I make this safer and how can I make this more productive? So we actually do x-rays or ultrasound at the stage of production to make sure there are no defects in these components. So we have developed a prototype system and delivered to the uh, Southern Railways, which they then continue to use it for quite some time. Watch Eureka with Professor K. Bala Subramanian, Head of Center for Non-Destructive Evaluation at IIT Madras, only on Rajya Sabha TV. The biggest sporting event on earth. Top teams competing to be crowned the world champion. Expert opinion, news from the training camps. Analysis of matches with our in-house experts. Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV's coverage of the FIFA World Cup. RSTV brings you all the news from the FIFA World Cup every day at 7 p.m. The new variety contains all the goodness of the original with an added punch of immunity to bacterial blight. So the next question is, how will this improved Samba Masuri be sent out into the farming community? This is the next stop in the journey of improved Samba Masuri. Test fields where seeds are prepared for distribution to farmers. Seed development is just as grueling as crossbreeding and there are many stages of quality control and purity checks we make an uh, observation at different crop stages for any deviant. Everything should look uniform in all the characters like height, flowering, grain type, all those things. And importantly, this um, resistance. That is how the, the nuclear seed is developed. If any seeds are found to be deficient, the entire batch is rejected. This ensures that only the very best reaches the farmer. In this seed, we ensure high high purity, very high purity. And this is a seed that we'll give to some select farmers who will grow it, who we know will grow it in the proper way. In 2008, seeds of the improved Samba Masuri made their big debut. The first batch was moved out from the test field into the fields of Andhra. Scientists were anxious to know, would their success in the lab be replicated in the field Bacteria <laughs> Local farmers are as much a part of this research as scientists in the labs. 
weary of losing up to 50% of their crop in previous years, they've readily offered their fields to test the new seeds. And the results have delighted them. 100% resistance to bacterial blight and seasonal yields as good as promised. I have 40 bags in the same way, 20-25 bags in the same way. I have to improve the same way in the same way. I have to improve the same way in the same way. I have to improve the same way in the same way. I have to improve the same way in the same way. I have to improve the same way in the same way in the same way. Farmers are thrilled with the new variety's high yields and blight resistance. But there's an added advantage. Considering the current opinion about large number of people about genetically modified food, the best way would be to go for developing varieties in a different method, not using this method. So bacterial blight the, the method that the Sambamasi rice that we have developed at CCMB is a variety. It's not genetically modified food. That's a major uh, difference. Improved Samba Masuri involves no extra cost to the farmer. Since its improved traits are strengthened through seasonal crossbreeding, the next generation inherits the same traits. This means the farmer doesn't need to spend money on fresh seeds every year. This is a straight variety. So once farmer takes the seed, he can use confidently for three years. So we advocate the farmers, don't buy the seed every year. Make your own seed. That's why you will save money on the seed cost and all. Uh, if you make inbuilt resistant varieties of rice, uh, there is no need for the farmers to apply any chemical pesticides. In terms of that, it is very environmental friendly and the farmers need not use any chemicals. It is going to increase their profits. In fact, this is already happening in our own uh, state of Andhra Pradesh, in Nandyal and Karnul, where this disease is very serious. Farmers are quite happy with this variety. Looking to take the improved Samba Masuri to other parts of Andhra and beyond, the project has joined up with CSIR 800. This mega project aims to impact the lives of nearly 800 million rural and urban poor across India through technology. In the aptly named Blight Out project, nearly 500 to 1,000 farmers will receive blight-resistant seeds absolutely free of cost. And it's not just a one-time transaction of seeds between farmers and scientists. Regular interaction, follow-ups and support groups keep the collaboration going strong. We have a program called Farmers Participatory Seed Production. Initially, we bring them here, we give a training, saying that how you can make your own seed. You produce your own seed. Don't depend upon a company or any other government organization to buy the seed every year. This partnership between the farming and scientific community has inspired real change. The idea is to develop brand ambassadors for this variety within the farming community. Some of these farmers we found from the farmers to whom we have given it in the previous years, they are actually growing the seed and selling it to other farmers. So the farmers have the opportunity to save the seeds and actually run a business out of it. Seed Malwane Raitul ki farmers kandar ki andi daun je paisi vaga kruthne chhodna unni seed ko develop jayar an kudna. Inasto rondo samchala dini throughout AP matto improve samma masle je chhodga Raitul ko hoga kan rawan je pina an kudna. But it's not just the farmers who have gained in the process. For this has been an unprecedented collaboration, bringing together not just two research institutes, but two research disciplines, agricultural science and molecular biology. We learnt a lot from CCMB in terms of how to handle the markers, how to set up the PCR reactions properly and how to analyze them. And CCMB also learnt from us in terms of how to do the crossing, how to advance the breeding lines, and then how to do the selection and how to do the phenotyping. So it was a sort of uh, all win-win situation where in which we learned something from them and then they learned something from us. We cannot work in isolation. A particular lab, a particular scientist has got his own expertise in his own field. Uh, we have got something of uh, that kind 
If you join hands to, between both the institutes, we can do wonders. Fresh winds blow across Andhra's rice belt now. The joint venture between farmers and scientists has changed the fortunes not just of a village, district or state, but of an entire economy. There's a clear winner in the battle of rice versus blight. And for that once dreaded disease, it's finally blight out. If you'd like to share your feedback on today's program, please send your suggestions and comments to Vigyan Prasar, C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi, 110016. Or you can mail us at info at vigyanprasar.gov.in.